welcome, 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 welcome. We are live tonight. We are live. We're going to give some people some few minutes to come in. We want you to come into this live, share, 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 come in and share, come in and share, come in and share, come in and share the live feed. Come on in and share. Come on in tonight. This is Pastor Williams from the Word Center Ministries. We are excited that you are here with us tonight. There is a word from God. I'm excited about what God is going to say tonight. And so I'm excited that you are here with us tonight um, from uh, my home to yours. I'm excited about what God is about to say to each one of us tonight. I think it's an awesome word. It's going to be very simple, but we're excited. I, I need you to invite. Uh, let's get 200 people in this room tonight. Come on. Come on, share. Share, share, share. Share, share, share. I'm logging in too so I can share. Let's share, share. Make sure that we've all shared. Come on in as you're coming in. Please share. Please invite somebody in on the live tonight. Invite somebody in on the live tonight. I am Pastor Williams. Um, as you've noticed, we have been on live every night at 7 p.m trying to give the people of God a word um, from God. And so as we in ministry at the, at the Word Center Ministries at 100 Johnson Avenue feels that it's very, very important that you all um, get mass volumes of the word to counterattack what the media is saying during such a time as this. And so we're excited about what God is saying. I'm so excited and so appreciative of all of my teammates at the WCM and their obedience to coming on live every night. You all, it's been stretching them. It's been shaping them. It's been molding them. It's been holding them more accountable with the word of God. It's been causing them to study. And so I'm excited not only is what uh, for what the word is doing for you all every night at 7 p.m., but I'm excited to see the growth in the members of the WCM. And so we are excited what God is going to say tonight. Come on in again. We want you to share the live feed. Please come on in and share tonight. Share, 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 share this live. Share the live, share the live, share the live. Amen. 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 We're going to give it a few more minutes and See if we can get those numbers up. Come on and share. Invite somebody. Invite your cousin, your next door neighbor. Even if you don't believe, you know how sometimes we be sharing this feed and we'll go past the name and we don't believe that they really want a word. Share it with them because that's the very person that need a word tonight. That's the very person that needs a word tonight. Come on. Come on. Share the live. 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 We are excited for what God is saying. And we know God is going to do a new thing in this place tonight. Come on. Share the live feed. I am excited to see all of you in here with us tonight. We're almost there, y'all. We're going to pray in just a second. Um, we're going to give it a couple of more minutes maybe and let you share and, and get some more people in the room. God is saying something amazing tonight. Trust me. Trust me, trust me, trust me. You want everybody that you know to hear what God is saying. You, you want everybody that you know to hear what God is saying. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We're trying out some new equipment, so please forgive me for looking back and forward and looking in all sorts of directions tonight. We're going to try to stay focused in on what God is saying. And again, I'm excited for what he's about to say in this house tonight. Come on. Let's share. It is Pastor Williams. The pastor of the WCM um, and my wife, she's here with me tonight. Um, I don't think that she'll be getting on live with me tonight, but you know, whatever the spirit leads, we, we got to definitely flow in the spirit of God. And so we're thankful for the grace of God that's on our life tonight. And we're thankful for what God is doing through us in ministry. We know that there is a great revival coming. It's a great revival coming. It's a great revival coming to our nation. We we're definitely knowing that it's a great revival even coming coming to our city. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And as God has torn down the walls of the church, I believe that the masses are coming to hear what God is saying. So come on, invite somebody. We are almost there. Invite somebody. Invite. Do not be afraid to share tonight. Come on, everybody in here, please share this live. Trust me. I hate to get started and somebody miss out on what God is saying even now. Come on, share. Just hit that share button and go down and just go invite, 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 invite all the way down. Invite. Don't worry about who it is. You'll be surprised who needs a word at a time like this. 
Amen. Come on, share it. Share it, share it, share it. Share it. We're praying. Father, we thank you. We thank you for what you're saying. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you. Thank you for what you are about to say, what you are about to do. Lord, I'm thankful for your presence. I'm thankful, oh God, for your power. I'm thankful for your word, oh God. I'm thankful for you just being God. I'm thankful for how great and wonderful you are and how you spared us and how you've been with us and you've protected us and you've given us comfort and you've given us a word, oh God, of encouragement that we may have hope through a, through a terrible time such as this. But I don't even count this as a terrible time, oh God. I think it's an opportune time. It's a time and it's an opportunity for the people of God to grow their relationship with you. And Father, I'm so thankful for this time that we have. And God, I pray tonight that you rejuvenate somebody, you restore them, you refresh them, you remind them, you resurrect them, God. You bring them back to a place where they're, they have much life and they're vibrant, oh God, and they're excited about who they are. They're excited about who they are in you and they're excited about what they're finding out about you, God. And God, for that, I'm just so thankful. I'm thankful for your son. Jesus that you sent to die on the cross for us. I'm thankful for all that he bared on our behalf, on my behalf. I'm just so grateful for him bearing all of my sins on the cross. And Lord, I thank you that you didn't have to do it, but you did it. And you said in your word, for you so love this world that you sent your only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, that they won't perish, but they'll have everlasting night life. So Father, tonight, God, we thank you, God, and we pray, oh God, that you touch everyone on this live tonight. God, you touch them in a mighty way. You give them a word straight from heaven. This is our prayer in your son Jesus name. Amen. 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 We are excited. We are excited. We are excited. We are excited. We are excited again. I am Pastor Williams of the WCM. I am the senior pastor and planter, the leader at the WCM, and I'm so excited. I think every night you've been seeing different leaders and team members of the WCM coming on every night and just depositing a word into your spirit. I am just so appreciative for my teammates and those who entrust me to lead them into their purpose. And so we're excited for what God is doing. And if you will just give us a moment tonight, we're going to deposit this nugget it is a powerful something that God placed in my spirit, and I'm just excited about what he's about to say. So we're going to go over to the book of Romans, the book of Romans chapter 8, the book of Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. Again, Romans chapter 8, uh, verses 1 through 4, Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. Come on in as you're coming in. Share this word tonight. I promise you, you do not want to miss what God is about to say. Amen. Romans 8 chapter 1, I mean Romans chapter 8 verse 1, it reads, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Jesus Christ, the law of the Spirit, who gives life, has set us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. Hallelujah. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the spirit. Hallelujah. Again, Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is now no condemnation. People of God, the biggest battle that we face is not against other people. I know the scripture says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and rulers of, of darkness and wickedness that have exalted themselves in high places and, and wicked places in the mind. But our biggest battle is not with our enemy. The biggest battle that we face as people of God, I come to speak to the children of God, the people of God tonight. The biggest battle that we face is against ourselves. It is against ourselves. The biggest battle that we face is against ourselves. It's not in what your enemy knows about you, but it's in what you know about yourself. The biggest battle that you wrestle with is not what everybody else know, but it's really about what you know that you have done. The enemy will try to bring up your past 
to shrink and try to demolish your future. What the enemy does is he use what you know about you and he brings it up in your mind to make you believe that you are unworthy of the future that God has planned for you. I come to tell somebody tonight that you are worthy of the future that God has planned for you, not because of any action that you did, but because Christ went to the cross and every sin that you could have ever committed, Christ took that thing to the cross and because of him, he died in your place so that you don't have to live in condemnation. Why? Watch this. Watch this. The enemy causes condemnation to keep us from fulfilling the things of God. The enemy causes condemnation. He causes you to beat up on yourself so that you will not walk in the things of God. Watch this. The enemy preys on your lustful weaknesses in the flesh. And then he uses what you know you have done to keep you from doing what God has placed you here to do. Watch this. But I want you to understand that God is sending me tonight with this word, Romans 8 and 1, to reset your whole life. Hallelujah. God said there's going to be literally a reset in your mindset because you've been wrestling with the spirit of condemnation. What is that? God, I'm not good enough. God, I'm not powerful enough. God, I don't have the, uh, enough anointing. God, I've not been in church long enough. God, I don't know enough about you. God, I don't know any scriptures. I can't quote any scriptures. I know Psalms 23. I know the Lord's prayer, but I don't know your word. God, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a minister. I'm not a prophet. I don't even really know if I hear your voice. God, I don't think that I'm adequate. I don't think I'm cut out for this. God, I don't think you chose me. All of these things are signs that we are condemning ourselves from fulfilling the things that God has called us to do. And the spirit of condemnation, it comes from the enemy. Your biggest battle that you are wrestling with is the spirit of condemnation. Come on, check yourself right now. Check yourself. Some of the reason why most of you have not come to church even today, because you think you got to get right before you come to church. That's condemnation. You think you got to be right before you come to church because you are afraid of what people are going to say about what you know that you've done. And you are afraid that people will judge you, not because you're worried about what they say, but because you know how you judge yourself. And so I come to tell the people of God tonight, if God is not looking at your sin, but he's looking at Christ through the fact that you've been saved, he don't even see the sin. He only only sees, watch this, how you obey his word. So the bad thing that you can do is disobey God when you are saved because your disobedience now has an effect on what God does in your life. Hallelujah. I want you to tell yourself right now, it is not my sin that's hindering me. It's my disobedience to what God told me to do. And the only reason why most of you are disobedient to what God has told you to do is because you're wrestling with the spirit of condemnation. You don't feel worthy enough. I come to step on your toes tonight. I come to, to, to hopefully bring your self-esteem up, that self-esteem that's low, because you don't think you're unworthy. You don't think you're good enough. And I hate to, I hate to bust your bubble tonight, but there's so many people in the body of Christ that don't think that they are good enough to preach God's word, to prophesy, to intercede, to pray, to be a Sunday school teacher, to be a teacher, huh, to be in a pulpit, to be a minister, to even give God's word in the Walmart, to tell somebody that they can be encouraged that God is going to work it out because you're so worried about what you did yesterday and last month and two years ago. You know who you went to the oak tree with and you know who you went to the elks with and you know who you went to d fours with and you know who you used to party with and drink with. You know who you used to drink Chirac with and that daiquiri with and that margarita with. You know who you used to smoke weed. Some of you, you still do it. You know who you still smoking weed with. You know who you still drinking with. You know who you still clubbing with. You know all of these things and because of that, you stay away from the church. You stay away from the call of God on your life because you're wrestling with the condemnation that says, I'm not worthy enough to walk in the call of God because I know what I'm doing. Hallelujah, God. But I come to tell you, the only thing that's going to make you do better is to step into the call of God because it's the call of God that brings accountability. And the longer you stay away from your calling, the longer you stay away from accountability, 
accountability. So the only reason why most of us don't come into the call is because we don't want to be accountable. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Watch this. The enemy works in what we call the shadow realm. He works in the shadow realm. What that means is he works behind the scenes. Where is your shadow? Your shadow is behind you, beside you. He works in a space of darkness. He speaks in dark places. He speaks in dark moments. He speaks when you're already down. You're already having a bad day. Your day don't start out right. Then he starts talking. He speaks when you have an argument with your spouse or you're in disagreement or your boss make you mad or your coworker say something you don't like. Then the enemy speaks to you. He speaks as a shadow in the darkness to you when you're having a moment where he has a door to influence you to do something or behave a certain way to cause you later on to not feel worthy to walk in what God has called you to walk in. I come to speak to you tonight. Watch this. Psalms 103 and 10. Psalms 103 and 10. Watch this. Y'all better say amen. I'm telling you, this is good. I'm going somewhere with this thing. Psalms 103 and 10 says, God does not treat us as our sin deserves or repay us according to our iniquities for as high as the heavens are above the earth so great is his love for those who fear him as far as the east is from the west so far has he removed our sins from us this means that if you are saved and you are a child of God, your sins are so far away from you that God does not see your sin. If God sees anything, he sees your disobedience. You think it's your sin that's hindering you from walking in God when it's not that. It's your disobedience to what you know God has called you to do. You might as well say amen. You might as well say amen in your home, on your job, with the buzz in your ear. You sneaking listening to me right now. This is an amen moment. This is a Selah moment because the enemy wants you to believe that it's your sin that's keeping you from God. But the Bible say, what can separate us from the love of God? How huh? not sin, not transgression, not your enemies, not your haters. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. God loved you so much that he sent his son to die so that you don't have to worry about now. He's not giving you an excuse to sin. He's not giving you an excuse to sin, but what he is saying is your sin cannot hold you hostage and be an excuse for you not to walk in the call of God. Amen. God has taken your sin so far away from you that you can't even imagine the distance between you and your sin. Watch this. His death not only purchased our forgiveness for our sin, but watch this. It purchased God's Christ's death. He, it purchased the forgiveness from our sin and it purchased us to have the ability to throw off the weight of the guilt of our sin. You need to put that, somebody need to write that down right here in this group. So don't know about, they don't miss that. What did Christ's death do on the cross? It purchased our forgiveness from sin, but it also gave us the ability to throw off the weight of from the guilt of the sin. Most of you know that you are forgiven, but you're still walking around with the weight. Hallelujah, God. You're still walking around.